Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. The Born Ultimatum, movie thoughts. So the reporter at the beginning, having uncovered this conspiracy kind of thing, I suppose you could call it this, you know, having done serious investigative journalism, I guess that confirms that he is not part of the American mainstream media. Yes, it's funny because it's true, and rather depressing. That part where... What is it? Noah, you know, the, the new deputy director of the CIA. He, he explains that the, I think it was the Blackbriar program is apparently an NEAT program? That's neat! Yes, I, I am a horrible, horrible corn dog. I know. And just to get the last of the... Uh, probably not last, but... some more... light stuff out of the way immediately. Is it just me or is Julia Stiles fiercely attractive? I, I suppose in general, but really in this movie maybe especially and, and it's not even like it tries to make her really sexy, I don't think, with the, the old serious thriller thing. And then once she gets black hair, it just goes through the roof on attractive levels. I'm sorry, I will get to more meaty stuff. In fact, let's start with her character. Why does Nikki help Born after, you know, having put a gun to her head last time they met? And that wasn't even that long ago, was it? Wasn't it like six weeks between the events of Supremacy and Ultimatum? Yeah, that, that seems... Yeah. When... I like that Bourne actually does tell Eamon... I keep wanting to call that guy Eamon... That Marie is dead. Is it just me, or is... I don't know if it's the same actor, I didn't quite get around to checking that. He looks completely different. Maybe it's just me. I don't know, maybe it was what he was wearing in the first one. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I like that aspect to his character, this sort of, you, you're gonna know the truth. And I'm the only one who's gonna tell you, because the American government won't. I like how that is sort of the, the, the note we close on with, with the movie and the trilogy that you can't necessarily trust the government, so take action. He, we, we have Landy faxing the, these, these documents very helpfully marked with, like, this is a U.S. citizen, you know, it, it practically says, please don't fax me to a news source on it. And, you know, Bourne... Yeah, he... Bourne going there for the, the truth, and then... He, he finds out, you volunteered, this was your choice. And it's kind of... Yeah, if, if we don't... If we're not watchful, this is what we become, or what we let happen to each other and ourselves. And then he, he quotes the professor at the, the fellow assassin in this, you know, look at what they make you give. Do you even know why you're supposed to kill me? Great line. And it, yeah, you have that, you know. He, born have he, he could have killed the guy, and yeah, he doesn't, so yeah, he, he didn't have to kill the guy, and he doesn't want to kill, he's not, you know, he doesn't want to be a killer anymore, he did, 
So, yeah. I like the character. I think Albert Finney playing him or something, the, the doctor, who I think is also known, named Albert, actually. You know, talking about the, 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 the training and all this stuff. And, yeah, I just, just like the character. I, we didn't get to see a lot of him, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed the portrayal and the whole... I, I don't know, just... The, the Yeah, that entire scene. I, I'm also really impressed with... I don't know, didn't that go on for like five, ten minutes? No action in it at all. And you're just glued to the screen. Excuse me. I like how the movie sort of continues to kill off people where you... I mean, you... The, the reporter, you expect that Bourne will be working with him for more of the movie. And the the guy, the CIA guy, who was the reporter's source, you also expect, you expect Bourne to catch up with him and then for, for, for him to get the information there. And they, they die. And that's because and that's something I think this one does maybe better than uh, at least supremacy. This one really hammers home the CIA. They are the CIA. They 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 know what they're doing. They are very very good at it. And if if you're going to you know go in, in a battle against them, you're not going to win every step of the way, no matter how good you are. It, it stands to reason, really, with, in spite of all of Bourne's training, the CIA have these massive resources at their, at their disposal, and there are agents who are I don't know if they were supposed to be quite as well trained as Bourne, or just almost, but still, very, you know, and, and the, the fight with Desh is quite cool, the entire, you know, and, and he actually, I, I like how Desh figures out, I mean, he's, he's told, uh, well, the, the guy, you know, the girl you just met for a pickup, She's the target now. The guy who's you can see in your windshield. I don't know if it's called that on a motorcycle, scooter, whatever. Is also a target. So yeah, he knows he's being followed. Is he gonna you know stop and try to stop Born right there? Possibly get himself arrested. Possibly cause chaos. He might not get the job done. No, he's gonna get to the guy, then get the job done. And he almost took out Bourne right with, you know, with the bomb. And I love how the bomb is also just, you had sort of almost forgotten he had it. You see him sitting there with, I mean, we don't need the, it practically has the word bomb, you know, written across it. We don't really need to see more than, we, it's, it's a cell phone taped to this block of something. We can figure out that's a bomb, and he, he can activate it by calling a cell phone. And so that's what he uses to blow up the CIA, you know, traitor, I guess. Yeah, I can call him. I do not remember the guy's, the, the character name at all. And yeah, that explosion actually almost takes out Bourne as well. And then, yeah, you, you have, you know, Bourne chases him down. He, he's trying to chase down Nikki. And they have a fight where, you know, they go through a couple of different everyday objects. You know, at one point Dash is using a, what's it called, a candelabra, I guess it's called. And, and yeah, it ends up with Bourne grabbing a towel as Dash grabs a, a razor blade. And it's at this point that I feel we should really arrange an intervention 
for poor Jason Bourne because once is yeah, coincidence. I mean, you know, just completely twice bad luck. Three times this is starting to be a bad habit. You have got to stop grabbing something that's clearly not a weapon when faced with someone who actually does have a weapon in your hands, Jason. We only say this because we care about you. I hope you understand that. Still, so it's a pretty badass fight. And the way the way he actually was he like strangles him with the towel. Yeah, that's that's pretty badass. Maybe you know you gotta wonder if at some point they're gonna start making you check towels, you know, going onto airplanes. The I also quite like the, the chase across the roofs of Morocco and you know, he jumps in through a window, the the motorcycle chase kind of thing. The one thing that are really, really awesome in this is the climactic car chase where Bourne is trying to get off this roof and the, the, the cars are right around and so he, at first he just backs up because he can't, he can't turn the car around in time or something and he's just getting down so that they can't shoot him through the window, the windshield I guess, and he's using the mirror to, to see, that's great, and he drives off the roof of this parking garage kind of thing and lands and gets out and keeps moving, that's pretty awesome. That is, like I said in the review, right at the, at the edge of what we can believe. I mean, you still just barely believe that he could survive that and that he could sort of, I, I don't know if I completely believe that he would know that he would survive that and not have broken bones, but I, yeah, just, and, and the way the car chase ends with the car sliding across the thing and rammed in the, yeah. Really, really cool. I really like the tension of the first Nikki scene where, you know, Born. I also love how he uses a fan too, because they can just sense there's something in there, there's something moving behind that door, and so they shoot, and the other guy knocks it open, and it's a fan, and Born takes out both of them, and then Nikki's there, and she answers the phone. And he's you know, got the gun aimed at her, and you know we're seeing okay if she says Ruby, she's actually saying that she's in distress and this whole thing, and yeah, this that was fantastic tension. There's sort of an implication that they maybe had a relationship. I don't know. I guess maybe that's why she's willing to follow him, but still, it's, yeah. I, I like how they handle that, that it's sort of not, it's not overt, it's, it's just enough that we can think about it, and it's, it's realistic. I mean, are these two people going to sit down and relate their deep heartfelt story? That's not, yeah, that's not going to happen, that's not the situation they're in, they have to keep moving. You know, I also really like how in this one, when Bourne has flashbacks, it doesn't feel like he's still making good time. There's like, at, at the beginning of the film, it actually almost costs him the, I mean, isn't there like a guy aiming, I think there's a Russian cop aiming his gun at him, and it just, he just barely wakes up in time. It, it feels like Bourne is almost out of control, and I like that. That's much more interesting than... He's superhuman, and even if he has a flashback suddenly interrupt him, well, he planned for that, so it's it's fine. One thing I do think about the climactic car chase in this is that the sort of outcome does feel a bit similar to... Well, you probably know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to give it away in this video. 
something different in the series, you know. And that's a little unfortunate. Then again, I, I don't know how many different times you can really end a scene like that. Because, you know, Jason is going to go up and confirm that, yeah, if the guy is going to keep going or not. Excuse me. I really like how born. I, I like how they take the thing of the... You know, he's, he's looking at Landy in, through the, the sniper scope when he's having a telephone conversation with her. And then they take that to the next step and he's in Noah's office. And, you know, Noah claims, oh yeah, I'm in my office. And I doubt that. Why would you say that? Because if you were in your office, we'd be having this conversation face to face. Click. That's really good. And then he breaks into the safe, which when the first, when you first see it, you're like, that's impossible to break into it. A fingerprint and a voice with it saying the name, you know. That is a bit of a luck on Bourne's part though, that Noah doesn't just say his first name or his last name, just to be, I don't know, yeah, that when, when he answers his phone, then again, I guess he didn't know that it was born calling him still. But but yeah, he gets into the the box and grabs the thing, and then Vosen is like, okay, kill him on site immediately. You know, I like that Landy helps him with you know giving him the the address of the SRD. I I never did quite figure out what that stands for, but anyway the. Yeah, the, the training facility and everything. And I suppose I could clear up. I know some people were confused by apparently the Landy, the, the conversation between Landy and Bourne that we see in this on the phone. You know, some, some people were confused because it's clearly the same as the end of supremacy it is supposed to be the same scene the you know they, they edited slightly differently but that that scene was only added to the end of supremacy because test audiences didn't like the for the scene that came directly before it to be the ending and I, I like that they did a remix of the, the Moby song of Extreme Ways at the end of this. Because it, at this point it's kind of synonymous. I, I wonder if they're going to play it at the end of Legacy. You know, it, it just, that born, that's born right there. And then, you know, you have the wrap up to the trilogy, you know, complete with, we have the, the, the call back to the first one with the professor, with, look at how much they make you give. We have him coming back to the training facility. And, yeah, at, at this, yeah, you know, it, it closes it off, and so it's, it's good to have a remix. And it's a quite good remix as, as well of, of the song, which we really connect to the series. I suppose that might more or less cover it. I, I like how they treated the sniper in this, that that they have him actually sit, and, and we're, we know that he's there, we know that he is ready to kill, and the, then the, yeah, the, the reporter is panicky, and as we'd already seen, he thinks that the guy with the, the what's it called? The cleaning person is also one of the, you know, one of the CIA agents and thus, you know, causes deviations from the plan and at the end of, you know, that, that's part of why it ends up failing.
please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.